Hello, good morning. You are catching me in my house mid renovation project. So let me catch you up to speed in my kitchen. I had this pantry closet. I don't think the space was used the best in this kitchen. So my plan is to turn this pantry into a coffee bar with built-in counter place for my small appliances. Like this is kind of the vibe. I know it's aspirational, but we're getting there. We really are because already I have torn down the walls of the pantry. I've tiled the entire back wall with this tile that I got off Marketplace. It's seriously so beautiful. And I put in a countertop that is bamboo. So it's looking like we're heading somewhere. It's looking good, but there's still a bunch of work to do. So I guess we should just get started. Welcome back to the series where I challenge myself to use thrifted materials and a love of all things retro to DIY our family home from this farmhouse to that 70s house. Okay. This feels like it should be tiny mic time even though I do not have a tiny mic, but just imagine it so. I wanna address a couple things that I did not talk about in part one that I think are important to know before we move on. So you'll remember that the reason we had to keep the bottom part of the walls was because the way the tile in the kitchen floor had been laid. It had been placed after the walls had gone up. So if I removed all of the walls, there would have been big gaps in the tile that would have been not fun to have to patch. <laughs> when we removed the center post, there was most definitely a hole that was still there uh, that I thought I was gonna have to patch. But turns out another plan ended up happening, which as you can see, the whole floor here is entirely covered. Let me tell you why. What are you doing? Hey, sit, sit. Okay, you can be here. <laughs> Throwing it back to the original idea for this design was to have a kind of vintage cabinet on the bottom and a vintage upper on the top. I did indeed find that ideal vintage cabinet to go underneath, but that was only a certain height. And I wanted to just go with the height that that was, but as you can see here on the wall, there is a really nice trim that connects with the rest of the wall. And it kind of only made sense that that cabinet in the countertop was the same height as this. It's always a fun process when you're working backwards, trying to make things work with existing items instead of completely designing from a blank space. All that in mind, I essentially had to come up with a solution to raise the cabinet to be flush with this wall trim here so the countertop could sit on top. Therefore, we built <laughs> a base here, which luckily for us covered the hole in the tile and got the cabinet up to the appropriate height. Now my head this whole time was so wrapped up in just solving different problems. How do we get the cabinet to be a certain height? How do we get it to line up with this nice trim? That I wasn't really thinking about what I was actually building as I was doing it. and. And now that it's done, I'm looking at it and realizing I have essentially built myself my own cabinet base. <laughs> and that was not the plan. And I am so aware of the fact that if I just put doors on this, I would have much more storage under here than I initially intended at all. And we, we could almost just call it a day. But I am nothing if not dedicated to a plan and a design, so we are just going to ignore that concept entirely <laughs> and forage right ahead with having the vintage cabinet underneath here. I think it's still gonna look so, so, so beautiful. And I mean, if I ever wanted to remove it and put it somewhere in the house, then I know I've got cabinet space under here. Okay, let's carry on and actually bring that cabinet in here because I would love to make sure that it still fits. <laughs> It's like a 1%, no, a much bigger percent of me that's a little worried. It's gonna be a very tight fit. Okay. Let's get it lined up and then... It's gonna fit? Because I feel like it's gonna scratch, you know, when we push it along the yeah. bottom. Does it fit? I don't think it's gonna fit. Hold on. Okay. No way. It's definitely scratch. You have to repaint this. That's okay. I can't believe that fit. Wow! That looks good. 
And one of the coolest features of this cabinet that I haven't even mentioned yet is the fact that the doors are double-sided, so you can't obviously open it from this side, but you can also open it from the back, meaning that we can still access any of the pipes or the electrical behind this wall if for whatever reason we need to in the future. So these two sides are just empty cupboards and then on this side there's actually some little pull-out drawers which will be great for storing like tea and stuff that makes sense with the coffee bar. So we've got the lower cabinet in place. Let's talk about the uppers now. My vintage upper cabinet was missing some doors, so I tasked Rochelle with having some glass sliding doors made for me. Hi, um, I'm looking for some glass for a project, but I'm not sure if it's something you would carry. Um, okay, that's great. Um, do you have it in different thicknesses? All right, sounds good. I will uh, send over the information. Thank you so much. So while those glass doors get made, I've actually brought the cabinet back to my house so I can figure out how to install it on this wall. Also, look how good it's looking together. Very excited. <laughs> so as you will have noticed, I left a blank spot up here where I did not tile it and that is for a specific reason. My plan to hang this cover up here is to use this special hardware, which is called a French cleat. This hanging hardware is especially good for hanging stuff that's really heavy and stuff that spans like a big width like my cover does. So how this works is it's two metal clips that basically sit into each other. So this piece will go onto the wall and this piece will go on the back of the cabinet and then together they will slide as one and you will have this secure piece on your wall. And you might be thinking, Becky, could you not have just installed that on top of the tile and not need to leave this gap? Technically, yes, but let me show you why I did it. This hardware takes up a little bit of space, maybe like a quarter of an inch. So whatever you're hanging is gonna stick off the wall that much. So if I put my hardware in this gap, by the time I add my cabinet, it is going to be perfectly flush with the tile. Aha! <laughs> Do you see how perfectly flush that's going to be? So the back of this is just this kind of like not too dense MDF material. So I don't want to rely on that to hold the cleat. But running through the center is this solid walnut wood shelf that's attached really securely on the sides, like it's not a free floating shelf. So that's what I think I can screw this into. And we are gonna, gonna hope for the best. Okay. <laughs> I kind of want to check and make sure that did go through the shelf and not uh, on the top or the bottom by accident. Looking good. Don't see any screws where they shouldn't be. Okay, I am gonna wait until Austin gets home until I hang that because that is a two person job for sure. Um, but in the meantime, I'm ready to stain all this wood that never got addressed. <laughs> so to do that, I'm gonna use a product called Danish Oil and it's in the black walnut color. Danish Oil is cool because I think it's made from linseed and something else. Linseed and... What's in Danish Oil? Stop. Got it, okay. <laughs> so yes, it is typically a combination of tongue oil and linseed oil, both of which are food safe. So although I don't plan to really be cooking over here, it is technically part of the kitchen, so I wanna be using something that's like, you know, okay. And yeah, and enter this stuff. It's gonna hopefully give me a matching walnut color without being toxic. So we love that. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a super light sand just cause it got a bit dirty in the process and then we are ready to apply. Just 
Okay, you ready to help me lift this? Bro. Bro, sis. Okay, this little lip goes onto this. The little lip up is, here. On, is that gonna work though? Well, <laughs> we're gonna hope so. Is that it? No way. You trust it? I don't know if I trust it. Is it huh? Yes. Are we sure? No. Mm -hmm. That was too easy. Maybe. Why was that so easy? I don't know. I'm not mad about it. And we also went in and just put some screws through the back into the studs because although the cleat is holding the weight of this, those screws are just gonna keep this whole thing flush to the wall for extra security. Is my glass ready? <laughs> it is ready. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful. Oh yes, <laughs> it's exactly what I expected. No, <laughs> piece that piece of glass. <laughs> Hold on, wait. I want to see the little hole handles though. Oh, that I'm curious. Okay. Have you even looked at this yet? Um, yes. It was unwrapped at the shop. Okay. <laughs> I think they're looking good. But I'm also terrified that it's <laughs> I'm more concerned that I have to lift this in and not drop it. That's what I'm worried about. Oh, it's so cute. So. Well, it's kind of weird, you know, like, <laughs> everyone touch, touch it. <laughs> oh, it's cute. I yeah. think that's gonna be so lovely. Okay, well, thank you for organizing that. Okay. I'm really excited to take that back and <laughs> confirm with you that it's gonna fit. Lord, yeah, please let me know. I will. <laughs> It's not that heavy. Okay, good. Because also, like when I mounted the shelf on the wall, it's like with the cleat, it's good. But I'm like, I don't know how much support this is gonna have when you add the weight of the doors. Yeah, I left the mattress in the bed on, in the car on purpose because like this will be nice and safe. Cushioning. I'm back home with the glass. Time to see if this is going to work. I'm a little nervous. So I have this piece like half in, and it's kind of getting stuck now. You put some grease on it? I don't. I don't know. I don't want to put pressure on it. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's great. It goes more likely that the wood is a little off. You need a hammer? <laughs> no. Okay, let's come back to this. No one. olive oil over there. No, let's do the doors. <laughs> That's what I'm more worried about. So I think it goes up into the track. And then, oh. That's enough for loop. That's too easy. That's so easy. Um, okay, hold on, we'll go to the other one. This is a very stressful project. Yay! Oh my goodness. Look at that. So you just gotta put your finger in here then? Yeah, that's how it goes. You wanna get a glass, you go like this, and then you get your glass. And you can slice your finger off. No, you won't. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. It's done then. Okay, we just have to get this piece in now. This is the last piece. And I don't think it's the glass. I think it's probably this wood is a little funky. It's more oil on it. Yeah, we might have to do something like that. Well, the fingerprints already broke. I know, I know. It's because I was sweaty and nervous. <laughs> you can't even see, though. The glass is so clean. <laughs> no one will know there's a piece missing. Get the hammer out? No. Hello, hello. I thought I was done, but I was just at the hardware store and I was walking through the lighting aisle and realized that I could take this one step further more and add some cabinet lighting underneath and above. So I, um, I found this brand, never heard of them before, but they make these ultra slim cabinet lights, which is great because I don't have a lot of space underneath and I don't want to see big bulky lighting. And another cool thing about this, <laughs> This is not a sponsorship. I'm just like, this is cool. You can buy the different little segments and snap them together to make it as long as you want. So 
I've got one piece here. I got another piece there that I've already plugged into an outlet that we have up the top. I am quite literally just gonna rest this top bar up here because you're not gonna see it, I hope. Okay, ready? Ready. Wow, oh, it's not working. It's not? Where? The top isn't working on the right. <gasps> no. <laughs> I don't want this to be such a good moment for us. Okay, now what do you think? That's cool. Looks great. You know, it makes it feel taller up there because without the light, it's kind of like you just focus on this much. Mm -hmm. And then with that, then you see so much, you know? Wow. I'm just saying words. I'm glad you're agreeing. Looks great. It does look great. That was awesome. Really highlights the tile job that took somebody a long time. So here she is, the completed coffee bar. Can we just take a second to reflect on the fact that this was a full on closed in closet just a few short weeks ago and now we're here. This is truly the project that just kept getting bigger and bigger from an entire tiled wall to custom glass doors that had to be made. None of these things I anticipated doing at the beginning of this, but that's okay because I love how it turned out. And as always, I'm very curious to hear your thoughts in the comments below because I know my style is a little different, I am aware. And if you did enjoy this video, would you mind giving that little subscribe button a click? You can kind of think of it as like a virtual tip for me entertaining you for these past 20 minutes, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> now next up, you definitely need to check out the makeover that I did in this area, my dining nook. I mean, I guess you're getting a little bit of spoiler now. Don't look too much. Go check out that video because if you liked that coffee bar, I guarantee you will like this makeover. All right, see you there. Bye. What do you think of my table? It's pretty professional. Looks like you paid for it. <laughs>